Well, hello everyone. It's been a long time since I've actually sat down and made a YouTube video. Um, if you know me, I have a few channels and they've kind of been sitting there a long time. I have been working my butt off this whole year of COVID. I am a nurse and I have not paid as much attention to trying to make videos or caring as much about thinking of new ideas for videos just because of everything that's been going on and because of how much work I've been doing. But I have the night off and this is going to be a Mandela Effect glitch in the matrix video. The last time I did a video like this, although I don't have many subscribers, people searched Mandela Effect and I got quite a few views. Everything I said in that video, I still stand behind. And this was a few years ago, and this is a real phenomenon. Um, it's really hard for me to describe a lot of the things that I've been personally witnessing. Um, I know I say I'm a lot when I'm thinking. <laughs> I have a few things written down that I'm going to talk about to jog my memory to help explain a lot of things. Um, just a little background. I have had a lot of different psychic experiences, alien experiences. I've made videos about certain things uh, that are paranormal. This is something I don't talk about in my professional life and only I only discuss it with certain trusted friends and some family. I'm very limited on uh, what I will say and who I will say it to, even though it is my truth and I don't want to hide who I am and what I've encountered. I don't want to sound like a crazy person and I want everyone to um, not be afraid or think things about me that may not be true. So just to get that out of the way. Um, if you found this video, I want to thank you for watching it. I am not sure when I will make follow-up videos or if you leave comments if I will answer them, but I just wanted to get this off my chest. So basically, about three weeks ago at work, I was repositioning a patient in bed with another nurse. This nurse is a very good person, very quiet, kind male nurse that helped me. And what we did was we kind of got the person bathed and um, something we do is we kind of help boost them up in the bed. They kind of, the way the hospital beds are, people tend to kind of slide down and then they're not comfortable. So when we slid this person up in bed, the pillow that was behind their head that was kind of up fell off the back of the bed. And so I bent down to pick up the pillow and it was not there. And I looked at this fellow nurse of mine and then the patient looked at me and looked at him and I said, I don't see this pillow. And uh, the other nurse moved the bed to look behind it. There's nothing behind the bed. He knelt down on his hands and knees and so did I, got on the ground. There was nothing under the bed. There was nothing under the mattress. We lifted up the mattress slightly just to kind of see if it like somehow fell behind, underneath of this mattress. This pillow was gone. Like the second it fell off the top of the bed, it slipped into another dimension. And I know this is insane and crazy to say, but we just got the patient a different pillow, put it under his head, walked out of the room. And I go, what the heck was that? And he said, I don't know. I think it was a slip in the matrix. That was his words. And so we didn't talk about it. And then about three days later, I went up to him and I said, look, it's been bothering me since that happened. What the hell do you think is happening? Um, and he said, I don't know. I went home and I told my wife about it. It was, it scared me a little bit. I said, it scared me. It still scares me because if us two people and the patient were all there to witness and we moved the whole bed and the mattress, where could a solid object 
like a, a pillow go in a small hospital room with all of us in there and no one else le coming into the room. So that made me think of another instance that happened to me in the late 90s. I was at a shopping mall and I am notorious for forgetting where I park my car, especially if it's a large parking lot. I've done this my entire driving career. And I was walking through a parking lot and there was someone else, it was a male, looking for his car just or wa just walking through the parking lot as well, kind of towards my direction. And he was looking around, not paying attention. Um, look, you know, not like watching where he was stepping. And I saw this man, and I'm not kidding you, walk through a car, like the front corner, of like where a headlight is of the car. And not my car, just a car that was facing me. And he didn't even notice. He walked through this car. He did not bump into the car. He did not walk around the car. He walked right through it, was not paying attention, did not even notice he did it. I saw it with my own eyes and I did not know what to make of it. I had told a guy I was dating at the time what I saw and he said he'd seen that before, but I don't know. I, I think he was either sort of making fun of me because he did do that or he was just trying to like, he was a one-upper so he'd be like, oh yeah, that happens. I've seen that before and you know, that kind of thing. It was his way of kind of dismissing me maybe, but I know what I saw and I didn't say anything to this person I saw this happen to. I think I was too in shock. I wouldn't have known what to say and I was so much younger at that time. I may not have um, spoken up, but how can a solid human being walk through a steel and metal car and not feel it or, or notice it uh, I know it was just a corner, but still a solid car. I uh, have been questioning that for many years of how I saw that and what, what the heck happened. And like my friend at work would have said, that was a slip in the matrix, or I guess I would say a glitch in the matrix. But I have three Mandela effects that have happened. Uh, one is a personal thing that happened like a story um of a personal thing and the other two are media things that have changed the first thing is um i had a girlfriend at work i was doing home care nursing at the time um, it was 2010 and my girlfriend had invited me to her house uh for like a dinner party or like a you know to have a few drinks or whatever and I had a really nice time and I had I met her husband and he was really, really fun. And he was telling me, I forget how the conversation started, but about this book that it's called The Fifth Dimension. He told me the author's name and I don't know how we got on the topic, but he said it was about um, the pyramids and theories about like uh, how the earth started and just all these like really interesting topics in this book about one man's theory about like how this all came about and um, who actually built the pyramids and it was other things in there too. And I thought, wow, that sounds so interesting. And he said, well, I'm going to tell you, it's hard to find. It's out of print. It's So if you do find it by this author, you better buy it right away. And uh, he said, if I had it, I'd loan it to you, but I, I haven't had it in years. So I guess the book was older at that time. Well, I was um, going to school on and off at that time, and I was buying books on Amazon. So I decided to just search Amazon, and I found one copy of the book. And I remember the description even said, this book is out of print, and there was only one left, and it was from like a private seller, like someone like me selling their textbook. It's like a person just selling their book on there. So I bought it and I had read it and I really thought it was interesting. And I had taken it on a trip to Las Vegas. And I, my mom is a reader as well. And I decided to just leave it at her house in Las Vegas. And I just said, uh, when you have time, you might really think this is interesting. It's got some interesting theories in it. And um, she was like, okay. And I remember the cover of the book had kind of like a pyramid and a planet Earth, 
I like a drawing. It had like several things that were kind of talked about in the book. And I remember the book had a red cover. But I, I certainly don't remember the author. And I've seen other books when I've searched later called The Fifth Dimension. But they weren't that author of that book. And they weren't about those things. So about a year or two later, I went back to Las Vegas to visit my parents. And I thought, hmm, I wonder, you know, if that book, um, if I could read that book tonight. And... Um, I searched high and low in their house and I could not find it. And my mom was like, I don't remember you leaving a book here. And I'm like, yeah, you know, we talked about it. Um, I told you it had really interesting theories in it. And you said you were going to read it. She was like, well, if you, if you left a book here, it's going to be on the bookshelf. There's That's the only place it would be. And I like looked high and low and searched this bookshelf and tore books off this bookshelf and organized it and I was like wow you know and I don't think she would have thrown it out or given it to somebody or whatever so I started to kind of let it go like well you know it was misplaced or maybe you know it's somewhere else in the house and I just don't know where to look or whatever I kind of didn't worry about it a lot so I was thinking about that book about a week or two ago and this this was I bought that book in 2010, so now it's 2020. I decided I didn't, I don't know a lot about the different features on Amazon, but I decided to search and see if I could find my past purchases. And I was actually able to find um, a way to search by year. So I looked in 2010 and I bought one book in 2010. And it said it was called The 13th Planet. And it was this weird book. And I thought, I've never seen this book in my life. I would remember if I bought a book like that or read a book like that. And it was not the author's name. I would have rang a bell if I would have read it. And I'm like, how could my memory have a completely different name of a book and look of a book that I purchased in that year but Amazon have this whole other book. And how come my mom doesn't remember that book or that conversation? And why is it missing from her house? If she didn't read it, it would have just been sitting there somewhere or just sitting on the bookshelf. It would not have been missing or and I would not have bought this whole other book. So why did that change? I don't know. And um, other books from my childhood that my mom had kept are missing as well. And three of those books were Berenstain Bear, Berenstain Bears books. Just to throw that out there, that's sort of somewhat related, but not really. So for me, I have this memory, and it's now a Mandela effect, and Amazon can't back up that purchase, um, and I don't know why. So the other day, as I do, I listen to music on my YouTube at work. Um, when I'm charting or I have downtime, I put in my earbuds, my little earphones, and I listen to music a little bit here and there. And I was searching for music or fell down a rabbit hole of music. And in the 90s, there was a song that I know by a, a band called R.E.M. And it was called Shining Happy People, like Shining Happy People. And I remember the video, and I used to watch it all the time on MTV and VH1. And, you know, Shining Happy People. And I always thought it was such like a fun, happy song. And I had fell down this rabbit hole and found a video, and it was Shiny Happy People, S-H-I-N-Y. And I'm like, shiny? That does, that's even hard to say, Shiny Happy People. And I listened to the song, and I swear I still hear him singing Shining Happy People. And I know that's like, might not be a Mandela effect. Maybe all these years, I don't remember it correctly. But I heard that song so many times and saw it written on MTV, the name of the song, the artist, so many times. I am almost 101% sure that it was Shining Happy People. How it became shiny and when it became shiny, I don't know. And I don't know why that would change. But I wasn't like that freaked out. I just thought, well, you know, maybe it's been a long time. I don't remember it correctly. I don't know. You know how you try to explain things away that don't make sense. But 
I'm pretty sure I remember the song. I heard it so many times. I saw the video so many times. It was a popular song. They still play it on the radio. But then this happened. So in the year 1990, New Kids on the Block went on a tour. It was called the Magic Summer Tour. And me and my girlfriend Jody were huge, what we call Blockheads or New Kids on the Block fans. And we followed like where this tour was going to be. Were they going to come to Detroit, where I'm from? You know, we were like had such a crush on them. We just loved their, their songs, their album, you know, at that time was awesome. And, you know, we get all the teen magazines and on MTV and certain channels, you would see commercials for the Magic Summer Tour 1990. And I remember without any doubt, these commercials said, sponsored by Pepsi, the Pepsi Magic Summer Tour, New Kids on the Block. Like over and over, you know how when something's big, they play the same commercial over and over and over. And they're playing it during stuff that I'm watching because they're trying to target my demographic as like preteen and teens for this concert. And I remember even thinking, I'm more of a Coke person. I know that's silly, but in my area, Coke was more of a thing than Pepsi. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I would still go to the concert if they were you know, sponsored by Pepsi or whatever. And um, I was like looking on YouTube probably about three weeks ago for some old New Kids on the Block videos just to, just to watch them. And I like the old songs and stuff. And I really enjoy New Kids on the Block. I have a couple of girlfriends that actually, we go to the concerts when they come to Detroit sometimes together. And the... YouTube has people that posted videos of those commercials that I remember as being the Magic Summer Tour sponsored by Pepsi, Pepsi Summer Magic Tour. It's a magic summer or whatever. Um, they're sponsored by Coca-Cola now in these videos on YouTube. Uh, if you look it up, even even if like I typed in Pepsi Magic Summer Tour or Pepsi Magic, Coke will come up like videos of them being endorsed by Coke will come up and they actually have a, a commercial of them singing a song about Coke for their tour. And I was like, almost passed out. I'm like, this is not real. This is not what I remember. I am not, I always prided myself that I had such a good memory. I remember people's birthdays. I remember dates. I remember, you know, I'm a study person. I have, you know, several college degrees. I am someone that memorizes things. I am someone that was always prided, like I prided myself on my memory and other people noticed, wow, you have a good memory. You remembered that, you know. I am like scared now. Like how many other details of my youth or of um, things that happened a few years ago are going to be changed or are different from my actual memory of how they were. And how many more glitches in this matrix am I going to find or see? Because where did that pillow go? How did that guy walk through that car and not even notice? And if these things change for me, there's got to be other people that are noticing things or have some of the same changes. What can we even do? Like, how can I even prove that I'm not crazy if the proof says something else? So I guess that's my story. I just wanted to get this off my chest. It's very confusing. I'm a really logical person. I'm someone who, like, tries to always think logically about things, research things. Um, I try to figure out a way to, like... Um, to look back and see where I went wrong or where I made a mistake. And in these cases, I did not make a mistake. Something is off. Something is wrong. And I understand that the world is changing and that, you know, things are different now. But memories from the past for me shouldn't change. They should, the, that's why they're a memory because it's you remember things the way they happened or how they affected you at that time. So even if things are different now than they were back then, 
those things shouldn't change to me. So um, I hope you really enjoyed this. If I would love um, a comment here or there if somebody um, remembers these things as I did. At least those last two. But um, yeah, that's... I don't know what's going to be next. I'm kind of nervous about it. So I hope you're having a great day and thank you.